I'm going to take uh, uh, Jackie Combs' question. Uh, Mr. President, could you please react to the reports of uh, secret government surveillance of phones and Internet? And can you also assure Americans that the government, your government, doesn't have some massive secret database of all their personal online information and activities? Yeah. The, uh, you know, when I came uh, into this office, uh, I made two commitments that are more important than any commitment I make. Number one, to keep the American people safe. And number two, uh, to uphold the Constitution. And that includes uh, what I consider to be uh, a constitutional right to privacy uh, and an observance of civil liberties. Now, the programs that have been discussed over the last couple of days in the press uh, are secret in the sense that they're classified, but they're not secret in the sense that uh, when it comes to telephone calls, every member of Congress has been briefed on this program. Uh, with respect to all these programs, uh, the relevant intelligence committees are fully briefed on these programs. Uh, these are programs that have been authorized by broad bipartisan majorities repeatedly since 2006. And so I think at the outset it's important to understand that uh, your duly elected representatives have been consistently informed on exactly what we're doing. Now, let, let me take uh, the, the, the two issues separately. When it comes to telephone calls, Nobody is listening to your telephone calls. That's not what this program is about. As was indicated, uh, what uh, the intelligence community is doing is looking at phone numbers and durations of calls. They are not looking at people's names, and they're not looking at content. But by sifting through this so-called metadata, they may identify potential leads with respect to folks who might engage in terrorism. If these folks, uh, if the intelligence community then actually wants to listen to a phone call, they've got to go back to a federal judge, just like they would in a criminal investigation. So I, I, I want to be very clear. Some of the uh, hype that we've been hearing over the last day or so. Nobody's listening to the content of people's phone calls. This program, by the way, is fully overseen not just by Congress, but by the FISA court, a court specially put together to evaluate classified programs to make sure that the executive branch or government generally is not abusing them and that there, it's being carried out consistent with the Constitution uh, and rule of law. Uh, and so not only does that court authorize the initial gathering of data, but I want to repeat, if anybody in government wanted to go further than just that top-line data and wanted to, for example, listen to Jackie Combs' phone call, they'd have to go back to a federal judge. And, uh, and, and indicate why, in fact, uh, they, they were doing further, uh, uh, further probing. Now, with respect to the Internet and uh, emails, this does not apply to U.S. citizens, and it does not apply to people living in the United States. And, again, in this instance, not only is Congress fully apprised of it, but what is also true is that the FISA court has to authorize it. So in summary, what you've got is two programs that were originally authorized by Congress, have been repeatedly authorized by Congress. Bipartisan majorities have approved on them. Uh, Congress is continually briefed on how these are conducted. There are a whole range of safeguards involved. And federal judges are overseeing the entire program throughout. We're also setting up 
We've also set up an audit process when I came into office to make sure that we're, after the fact, making absolutely certain that all the safeguards are being properly observed. Now, having said all that, you'll remember when I made that speech a couple of weeks ago about the need for us to shift out of a perpetual war mindset. I specifically said that one of the things that we're going to have to discuss and debate is how are we striking this balance between the need to keep the American people safe and our concerns about privacy. Because there are some tradeoffs involved. I welcome this debate. And I think it's healthy for our democracy. I think it's a sign of maturity. Because probably five years ago, six years ago, we might not have been having this debate. And I think it's interesting that there are some folks on the left, but also some folks on the right who are now worried about it, who weren't very worried about it when it was a Republican president. I think that's good that we're having this discussion. But I think it's important for everybody to understand, and I think the American people understand, that there are some tradeoffs involved. You know, I came in with a healthy skepticism about these programs. My team evaluated them. We scrubbed them thoroughly. We actually expanded some of the oversight, increased some of the safeguards. But my assessment and my team's assessment was that they help us prevent terrorist attacks. And the modest encroachments on privacy that are involved in getting phone numbers or duration without a name attached and not looking at content, that on net it was worth us doing. Now, some other folks may have a different assessment of that. But I think it's important to recognize that you can't have 100 percent security and also then have 100 percent privacy and zero inconvenience. You know, we're going to have to make some choices as a society. And what I can say is that in evaluating these programs, they make a difference to anticipate and prevent possible terrorist activity. And